Hey, greetings everybody. GleeCon here again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft. And I am excited. I'm excited for a couple of reasons. One, um, I'm excited because we are in the last chapter of a novella and I'm excited to hear the end of what happens. What happens with the orcs, with Eitrig, with Tyrion. How does this whole thing go? But two, I'm excited because we will we are finished after this with all of the material that happens in between the third war, uh, the second war expansion beyond the dark portal and the third war and every content thing that we start going forward will for the next while will address the third war um i have had i've been kicking around this thought for a while and i got some comments yesterday um that i'm gonna put i'm gonna organize we have so many episodes now that we're over 500 um that i want to organize the things into different playlists at least and maybe it'll help anyone that wants to go back and look at um archived content old content um i also i gotta sit down and I, I really want to lay it out so i'm gonna have to take some time with make some notes and really find out because there's um there is a decent chunk of things coming forward so spreading out before us in directly related to the third war is there's one short story Vol'jin. Uh, redemption or something like that there is the whole second part of uh, our this rise and lich king which is probably about five chapters there's of course the whole first game not i mean warcraft 3 not counting the expansion there's the whole chapter 2 which is about 20 sections 20 episodes of chronicles um there are isolated chapters in the novel paragon's Blood of the Highborn, I think it's called, which essentially tells, um, it's a short novella, but it, all, it it gets into the details of why we have Blood Knight Paladins. So just like our Unbroken kind of started talking about how the Draenei learned shamanism, um, this is more serving why the Blood Knights have Paladins, why the Blood Elves have Paladins. Um, there's a comic series called Ashbringer. Um, which I believe is four episodes or something like that. There's also a comic series called Death Knight, um, which is, I think, around three episodes, or maybe it's a manga. There's also a couple isolated chapters, like the prologue to the Illidan novel, um, a single episode of another comic. Um, so there are just these little smattered things that are kind of all over the place that I'm going to have to gather all of these things together first. And then look through them and really go level by level. Chronicles already kind of throws a monkey in the work, a monkey wrench in the works because um, it starts out okay. Like its first couple sections line up with the uh, like intro cinematics to Warcraft Three, but then it basically goes to the entire human campaign. Then before it touches the orc campaign, it does the prologue campaign as part of the orc campaign so that's going to mean it's just going to basically make, make us have to read half the chapter before we can even do the first level so it kind of messes things up but we'll do it it's okay i mean i'd again i'd rather read the lore before we play the games um and do it that way and it, it'll just slow us down either way um at the rate we do things uh it should be good probably by this weekend that we are that we're starting to bust out the game itself but again i gotta really I'll, I'll, on the next episode i should be able to lay that down a little bit more concretely so enough delay stay a while if you want to listen heck if you made it this far you already stayed a while um we're gonna read chapter eight of of blood and honor it's called the perfect circle and this is shouldn't be that long here we go sunlight cascaded down through the open skylight in the cathedral's vaulted ceiling 20 year old talon forgery stood upon an ornately carved dais and basked in the warmth and splendor of the holy light. Large silver plates of armor adorned his broad shoulders. Beneath the plates, carefully embroidered dark, a carefully embroidered dark blue stole hung from his neck and streamed down his chest. He held a mighty two-handed silver warhammer in his hands, which he was told had once belonged to his father. So now we are... I don't know, 15, 16 years later, maybe a little bit more, um, cause his son was a toddler before. And now his son, um, is becoming a paladin. It looks like 
Kalin was a strong, handsome young man, bathed in the light as he was. He seemed almost transcendent. An aged archbishop stood before Talon holding a large, leather-bound tome. The old man had the light of joy in his eyes as he addressed Talon. Do you, Talon Fordring, vow to uphold the online codes of the Order of the Silver Hand? he asked. I do, Talon replied sincerely. Do you vow to walk in the grace of the light and spread its wisdom to your fellow man? I do, Talon said shakily. He was overcome with a thousand different emotions at once and had to fight to get a grip on himself. This was the moment he had waited for as long as he could remember. He glanced around quickly and saw his mother standing proudly in attendance. Though years of hardship and loneliness had streaked her soft golden hair with silver strands, Carondra was as beautiful and radiant as she had ever been. She marveled at seeing Talon being anointed as a paladin. She wished that Tyrion could have been present to see his son follow in his footsteps. Do you vow to vanquish evil wherever it be found and protect the weak and innocent with your very life? The Archbishop asked Talon in a ritualistic tone. Talon swallowed hard and nodded while saying, By my honor, I do. So we're 20 years later. Each expansion of World of Warcraft is approximately two years minus... Um, minus uh, Warlords of Draenor, there's a weird time thing there. And then this next expansion, I think they're saying it's four or five years or something like that, that has gone in between Shadowlands and what's coming next. So they, they have done a little bit of a time jump. Um, so either way, the second Warcraft 3 with expansion takes about two years. Um, and we are beyond eight expansions in. So somewhere along the line, Kalen should be this age, 20 years old. Um, I'm trying to think of another character that we've seen. So this character, based on the timeline of things we had, he's a pinch older than Anduin, the current king. So this dude sh should be able to be out there, this Talon uh, Fordring. And I wonder if he is. I wonder if you can find Talon Fordring in any of the games. It's, that's worth the research. Uh, Dying, dying to know. Curious. I'm going to Google it after we get off. Okay. The Archbishop continued to speak to the assembly, but overcome as he was, Talon could not hear his words. Oblivious to the ceremony proceeding around him, he reached into the pocket of a ceremonial cassock and took hold of the rolled, tattered parchment that he always carried with him. It was the note his father had left him before he was exiled for the kingdom. Kalen couldn't count how many times he had read the tattered letter over the years, but he had memorized every line, every subtle stroke of the quill. He recalled one of the last passages in his mind. My dear Talon, by the time you're old enough to read this, I will have been gone a long time. I can't adequately express how painful it is to have to leave you and your mother behind, but I suppose that sometimes life forces you to make difficult decisions. I fear that you'll no doubt hear many bad things about me as you grow older that people will look upon my actions and condemn them as evil. I fear that others will look down upon you for the decisions I have made. I won't try to explain everything that's happened in this note, but I need you to know that what I did, I did for honor's sake. Honor is an important part of what makes us men, Talon. Our words and our deeds must count for something in this world. I know it's asking a great deal, but I hope that you will understand that someday. I want you to know that I love you dearly, and that I'll always carry you close to my heart. Your life and your deeds will be my redemption, son. You are my pride and my hope. Be a good man. Be a hero. Goodbye. Talon came out of his reverie just in time to hear the Archbishop say, Then arise, Talon Fuldring, paladin defender of Lord Oran. Welcome to the Order of the Silver Hand. Just as it had in his boyhood dreams, the entire assembly erupted in cheers. The joyous din echoed throughout the vast cathedral, drowning out every other noise. His friends and comrades clapped and hollered in congratulations. Almost everyone gathered in the cathedral was on their feet, joining in the revelry. Beaming with pride, Talon turned and smiled warmly at his mother and his old friend Arden, who stood a few paces behind her. The aged guardsman who had walked, watched over and protected Talon for nearly fifteen years smiled back proudly. Arden marveled at how much Talon resembled his father. He knew that Tyrion would have been proud. 
The crowd surged up to congratulate Talon and welcome him to the order. Arden had turned to make his way toward the exit when out of the corner of his eye he saw a familiar figure moving through the crowd. The tall, nondescript figure wore a green hooded travel cloak and weather-stained leathers, but Arden would have recognized the gray-haired man's piercing green eyes anywhere. For a brief second, he locked eyes with the aged stranger. Tyrion, Arden whispered under his breath. The stranger smiled knowingly at Arden and raised a stiff hand to his brow in salute. He then pulled his hood low over his face and promptly slipped out the back of the cathedral. Looking back at Talon, Arden said, Like father, like son. Huh. Why? I don't see how that applies in that sentence. About the author, we, we should know about Chris Metzen some. Uh, he's the creative director for Blizzard Entertainment. He's worked both as a writer and designer for the company. At this point, for the past seven years, again, this is in 99, 2000, right around there. Chris has led the development of Blizzard's game worlds and storylines, including those of Warcraft, Diablo, and Starcraft. Chris co-wrote the Starcraft short story Revelations with fellow author Sam Moore for the spring 1990 issue of Amazing Stories. Warcraft of Blood and Honor is Chris's first solo foray into the world of fantasy fiction. It might be his last as well. I mean, and it's not, like, terrible. I would say, no offense, Chris Metzen, you are amazing and integral to the uh, creation of the Warcraft lore. And again, this is your first, this is your freshman outing. But, compared to the things we've read so far, I would put this on the weaker end of the spectrum. Um... There are people that are handling the lore much better. Um, I think the concepts are good, and that's what he's good at. The character, like, cores are cool. But the actual flow and cadence and, and world scene building and dialogue, they're weak. Um, but yeah, the ideas are good. And again, no offense, because it's very easy to it's very easy to be you know critical of someone and, and not be a creator. So uh, I get it, uh, and I'm not I'm in no way like trying to put myself on that level. I'm just I'm just making an observation because together on this channel we consume a lot of it together. All right, we got this episode in the pipe five by five. We have this chunk of the timeline wrapped up. I love it, and I look forward to next episode where we'll just lay out the whole next section of the lore all in front of us thank you so much for watching and listening i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you next time on lore of warcraft